the more you can change the visuals, the more you can keep freshening it, freshening it up, the more people wake up and pay attention. So you talked about uh, the ATEM uh, Mini and the live trainings that you were giving. So let's move to the next chapter where we'll talk about live recording. So um, guide us please uh, through your equipment. What do you have at home? Uh, all those different cameras, uh, that very complex setting that makes you actually uh, stand out. Well, um, I mean, I'm not sure if I've got everything completely plugged in, but what I do is um, I have four inputs. Um, so um, I normally have a, um, and I'm just funny enough, I'm in the process of reorganizing my studio at the moment because I'm again learning from you, taking the lead and actually switching to a standing setup. So I'm, I'm soon going to replace this desk and do every, change everything. But I normally have two to three cameras, um, which I can switch between using the ATEM Mini. And they're all the same kind of camera. They're all the Sony A5100s I mentioned. So for instance, if I'm teaching people how to shoot video on a smartphone, I can cut to a shot of me um, close up of my hands. Um, I can actually plug my phone th through an HDMI source into the ATEM Mini and switch to that. So if I wanted to then demonstrate an app, I could switch to that and do that on my phone. Um, and that's how I use the ATEM Mini, I switch between them. And depending on what platform I'm using, I can even run my slides through that. So instead of sharing your screen, you just press a button, switch to another source, and you can share your slides that way. Yeah, and you can also um, embed your image uh, within the, the image, uh, thanks to the, um, to the ATEM Mini, right? Yeah, you can um, put a little box in there. In fact, um, I'm going to be naughty here, and I'm going to reach down, and I'm going to do this um, live now. So if, this obviously wouldn't work if you're listening for the audio, but um, what I can do, for instance, is let's say I have my um, phone, and I'm going to teach people how to edit on my phone. So I've got this as a source. So let me uh, figure out which source this is on. Not come up yet. There it is. And um, I could then go into this app and I could start demonstrating how to edit on this. But in the meantime, I could see actually I, st I still want to appear on the screen. Um, and, you know, we're slightly being cut off yeah. just on the framing here. But that's how you could do it. I could then jump on there and jump between my phone. I could jump between different cameras. Um, and the, the real reason for this is I think the one thing that people forget is even though you're just on Zoom or whatever it is, you want to make it as visually engaging as possible. And that's why, I mean, again, what I really like about what you're doing is you try to make it look as professional as possible. The visuals are nice. The layout's nice. Um, because if you're watching a TV show, they're constantly changing the shots and using graphics and trying to make it as visually as compelling as possible. So if I'm doing a presentation, whether it's conference style presentation or I'm doing um, training, I try to make sure I can like change the camera angle, like bring up a graphic, just change the visuals. Um, so the more you can change the visuals, the more you can keep freshening it, freshening it up, the more people wake up and pay attention. Absolutely. Whereas if it's just like a Zoom call and it's the same shop for an hour, then people will switch off. Yeah, they, they will become tired of, of not being triggered, of not being um, excited by what they are seeing. And obviously then they will switch off the camera and that when, when you see many people that are uh, hiding behind a switched off camera, that's when things are becoming nasty, right? Yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, uh, funnily enough, um, I think there's even cultural things, you know, I do training with different countries and some places people are just are less comfortable switching on their cameras. Um, sometimes, again, it depends on how proud of our people of their location, you know, if they if it's messy behind them, they don't want, don't like their camera on. Um, but generally, yeah, I think the more you can get people on screen, engaging them. So when I do Zoom trainings, I try to sometimes call on particular people and say, what do you think of that? And then they have to pop up and engage. But it's it's harder to get them going at first. In the real world, you can literally walk over to them and say, right, what do you think? Um, on something like Zoom, you have to work a little bit harder. But I think I'm getting better as time goes on in building in that interaction. And that's where, again, your visuals can work. You know, if you're doing something live, whether it's on Facebook, YouTube, or Zoom, you know, maybe you have to throw up a graphic with a question or a call to action. Anything you can do to get more interaction will really help your engagement. Absolutely, absolutely. Do, do you think those skills of uh, recording live or of, of talking live uh, online uh, will become important skills in the future? Oh, well, I mean, 
yeah, I mean, if I could, if you took one message away from what I'm saying here is, um, there was a time when, for instance, okay, let's take another skill, typing. There was a time when if you went into a big company in maybe the 60s or something, and you needed a letter typed or a script typed or whatever it was, there would be specialist people who would type, you would give them what you had done and they would type it up. Now, if you go for a job somewhere and you say, actually, you know, I'll work for you, but you need somebody to type my emails, you know, you wouldn't get in the door. Um, in the same way that there was a time when you didn't have to worry about video, it didn't matter. There was somebody, you had a video team, a, a videographer, a camera person, whatever it was, and they worried about video and you didn't have to worry about it. Whereas now, if video is how you communicate, whether it's on social media, whether it's in meetings, video has got more and more important. And what's happened with the COVID lockdowns is it speeded that whole process up. So we're not gonna go back to the point now where even if obviously, you know, in the future people will be on fewer Zoom calls, they will still be using them for things that they wouldn't have done in the past. So if you want to communicate nowadays, you have to understand video. You have to understand how to present on camera, how to get your shot looking good, maybe how to do some basic video editing if you're going to record video. So for me, video has become a baseline skill that everybody will be expected to learn. And that's why, again, I say, even if you are, whether you're a podcaster or it's just in your normal outside work, being understanding lighting, framing, um, you know, how audiences respond to different kinds of video, that is something which I think is becoming an essential skill and something that literally they should be teaching in school.